I've had my CNC for about a year now, and I've been dealing with the same problem since day one. So I think it's time to fix it. I'll bring you guys in closer, show you my problem, show you what I'm thinking about doing, and hopefully I can solve it. Okay, here we go. If you're a little squeamish, please turn away. This isn't gonna be pretty. Yes, this is my problem. This is horrendous. I can't have this. <laughs> I need to come up with some sort of solution to fix this. So as I worked the other day, found a really awesome looking palette. So I took it home, stripped it apart and pulled all the slats out. I removed the nails and now I've got some awesome boards like these. So what I think I'll do is I'll glue all four of these together and then I'll cut it to length, whatever fits inside my drawer. And then I'll use a bowl bit and I will pocket out two rows of recesses here for all the bits that are commonly used. And then I will have a larger pocket up here and that will hold any extra bits and any bits that are still in the containers, any doubles, anything like that, things that aren't really used all that often. But I think this will give me a really nice organized way to see all my bits. I can open my drawer, grab a bit real quick and move on, get onto the CNC. So all this is well and good. The only issue I'm having now is I'm gonna create my file and easel. I'm gonna have all my pockets. I'm gonna have everything correctly set up just the way I want it. But I need to somehow accurately transfer all of that to light burn because I wanna burn some labels on here. That way it'll make it even easier for me to spot the bit I need grab it and move on. So I need to find a way to accurately transfer all of those dimensions from easel into light burn. So mess around with this for a little while. Once you get it exactly how you want it, I think this is where I'm at right here. I'm gonna like this. Come up here to project, download project zip. It'll ask you all work pieces or current. I only have one file here, so current. Then click download zip. I've got mine saved here on desktop SVGs. Gonna save this as bit tray. And then just click save. Once you've got it saved, you need to extract it. So extract all. Now you can open it up as an SVG. So that's exactly what we need right there. This is a exact one for one copy of the SVG. So we just have to go into Lightburn and import this. We're sitting here in Lightburn, file, import. And you can see there it is. There's your exact same file there. So before you go any further, there's two things you need to do just to make 100% sure that this is gonna work. First thing you do, highlight everything and come up here and just check the dimensions. We got 14.9, 12.3. Pull up your original SVG, highlight everything. You can see right there, 14.9, 12.3. So we got an exact match there. So now before we leave easel, we come up here and we check our project material. That's 16 and three quarters by 14 and a quarter. So we're gonna come over to Lightburn. We're gonna draw a box with those exact same dimensions. And then we're just gonna center this up on our project, highlight everything. Come up here, click Align V Center. Click Align H Center, and there you go. So now we've got the exact same file set up in Lightburn that we have over in Easel. So the way I like to set these two program files up, if that makes sense, is I like to run them both from zero. That way there's no discrepancy whatsoever. So you set this one to zero, so you know your center point is gonna be right where my cursor is. Just like an easel, I wanna set this file up to run from the exact center, zero. So you come down here to job origin. I've got it clicked right there in the center. And there it is right there in the center. So the importance of having this box around our 
SVG that indicates our material is if I start to add some labels here and you can see this label here is wider than our pocket. So if I zoom out here and I bring that within the shadowy perimeter of our SVG, you can see the center point is right there. And now if I slide this out past the edge of this, you can see our center point stays right there. But now if I were to get rid of this box, watch that center point. See how it jumps to the left? Because now it's saying the outside perimeter is outside of this digit here. So you would either have to then pull this in so that it would be within the imaginary line of the outside of this or you can just keep that box there and now anywhere within this box your center point is going to stay exactly where you want it to stay. So that way you know you have perfect alignment. This way you know your zero of this. Running this from center is the same as running from center in easel and you'll get perfect alignment on your file. Got all my labels in here. Everything looks great. Before I save this G code, I just have to do two more small things. Come up here into this pocket over here and make sure that your SVG here is output is clicked off. If it's on, Lightburn's going to try to actually burn that. That's not what, what you want there. So you want to turn that off and then your outside perimeter here, have that one turned off too. If that's on and you come up here to preview, you can see Lightburn's going to actually burn that perimeter. You don't want that. So have both of those clicked off. And that's what you're going to get right here. Not too bad there, 14 minutes. So I'm going to take this over to the CNC, set it up. Can't wait to see how it finishes. So now that I got my files all set up and I'm ready to go, I just need to find that bowl bit. I threw a coat of oil on this. It's been a couple of days, it's fully dry. I threw my bits in here. So let me show you guys what I got. Now that is much better. This is what I'm talking about right here. I can see all my bits. I've got my wrench, I've got my extra bits. It looks great. I love the way this wood turned out. The oil on here really brings out the grain in the wood. I am very happy with this. If you guys take your time, you set the file up right, you use a couple of these tricks here that I showed you in the video, you can get a great looking file just like this.